Okay, so this video is going to answer the question, what should I take with me on a CE5 adventure? First of all, I do apologize. There's uh, like a neighbor has just turned on their air conditioning or heating or something and it's making a lot of noise in the background. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Uh, but I'm gonna push through with this uh, the best I can. The most important thing on a CE5 event is that you feel comfortable in terms of your temperature. And that's easy to do with your clothing if you're in a warm environment. If you're in a, a cold environment, it's, uh, it's harder. And so I'm gonna show you the clothes that I wear to keep me nice and snug and warm when I go out uh, in a very cold environment doing CE5s. I do recommend getting uh, your clothing, your equipment from a dedicated camping or uh, skiing or outdoor sports uh, shop because then the clothing has actually been been designed to keep you warm and it, it's a lot more effective than just regular clothing. So I would wear some gloves, I would wear some kind of hat. Now this is a pretty thin hat but I'm going to have a, a hood on top of that. I recommend having basically three separate or three different layers of clothing. Uh, first of all, you want some kind of uh, under clothing, uh, both on your torso and on your legs, that is specifically designed uh, as under thermal insulation clothing. And this particular brand that I've got here is Under Armour. And uh, this has been uh, designed to keep people extremely warm in uh, extremely cold conditions where the person is actually inactive. And it says that actually on the box. This is for inactive people in cold environments. So something like this is good as an underlayer on your top and your bottom. Then you're gonna just wear some regular clothes in the middle. And that could be jeans, uh, or it could be uh, like jogging, uh, pants or trousers. Uh, it could be just an ordinary sweaters, fleeces, anything that is, is pretty, uh, gonna, gonna keep you fairly warm in just normal conditions. And then you want a third layer on top of that, which is like a, a proper decent coat. And here is the coat that I have got. Now this is the brand Columbia, and this is a ski jacket. And I got this ski jacket because it's nice and puffy. It's got good insulation. It's also got a reflective surface on the inside. This is a really good jacket uh, for keeping people warm when they ski. It's got a nice hood, nice and thick and soft and comfortable. And I think it's always important to buy uh, synthetic materials instead of uh, basically torturing birds, pulling off their feathers in order to have down on the inside of coats. So this is all synthetic. And I do recommend this as a good outer layer, this Columbia ski jacket there. Now I personally uh, get cold extremely easy, so easily. So I am going to put over the top of that even, I'm gonna put one last layer and that is just a very thin jacket, which uh, is just gonna prevent wind from blowing through the coat, uh, the, uh, the ski jacket. So this is, well, this is a Peter Storm outdoor equipment jacket, and this just goes over the top. Uh, it does kind of bulk you out quite a lot, but this, this keeps me extremely warm when I wear this over the top of the ski jacket. And then for my legs, uh, my final outer layer would be this. This is outdoor gear and these are ski pants. So these go, go on over the top of jeans or whatever trousers or pants you're wearing. And these kind of have a double layer at the bottom for making sure no snow gets into your socks. And uh, as well as being water resistant and wind resistant, these particular ones are insulated on the inside. So these, these things, all of these clothes together will keep me extremely warm. That's those. Now for feet, what I used to wear was just fairly regular clothes or hiking boots, but then you have, you have uh, 
cold air can get in and warm air can get out at around where the ankles are. So I would wear kind of uh, hiking or camping socks and then I would wear some kind of boot like this. This is what I recommend. Now I'm not sure how well you can see this, but inside the boot there is this huge thick layer, padded layer of insulating material. So these boots are way bigger than my feet actually are because all the way through they have this extra layer of insulation on the inside. So I recommend getting something like this. These are waterproof, uh, they're good for hiking over rocks, they're very sturdy and your uh, trousers or pants can go inside the, this part here of the boot and everything seals in really well uh, and what are these? These are field and stream. So I bought these from a outdoor sports shop uh, called Dick's Sporting Goods and I recommend these uh, a lot. They're relatively inexpensive and they're going to keep your feet extremely warm. The next thing you need to consider is when you get to your CE5 location are you going to want to sit down on a chair or are you going to want to lie down on some kind of a mat? Now this is down to personal preference. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages in each. Uh, the advantages of the chair are, well, you've got uh, somewhere to put your drinks. It's easier to stand up and, and move around quickly. It's easier to take photographs if you've got a tripod set up, things like that. Um, the advantages, I would say, of a mat are when you're lying down looking up at the sky, you can see the whole sky. When you're carrying it, it's a lot lighter. Things like this chair can end up uh, weighing you down quite a lot if you're hiking into remote locations. Um, but it's really just about what you feel comfortable with. Um, so I would just suggest uh, experimenting a bit with these uh, different possibilities. This is a, my favorite chair. Um, it just unfolds and I'm not gonna be able to show you here. Maybe I'll show you on a photo on the video. But this unfolds, where do I get this? I got this from Dick's in America. And what brand is this? This is Quest. And this is only about $20. Uh, so that's very very cheap and it's it's one of the most comfortable that I that I found when I went shopping uh, for chairs it's uh, one of the lighter ones um, so all around this is actually a, a, a great one that I do recommend quite a lot this is Quest from Dix and this I also got from Dix uh, that's the shop that's closest to me here this is Field and Stream and it's a uh, Hmm, half an inch, about a centimetre and a half, that sort of a thickness. Um, and it's very light, it's easy to carry, and it's very comfortable to lie on. I un unfurl it about two thirds of the way and then use the remainder that's curled up as like a pillow for my head. So I recommend that quite a lot, but it's entirely up to you whatever you feel most comfortable with, both carrying and lying on. So aside from the warm clothes that you're going to wear to a CE5 event and the, the chair or the mat that you're going to lie on, you don't really have to take anything else with you. You don't have to take any equipment at all with you. Uh, I do recommend taking some water, uh, maybe some snacks. Um, but aside from that, there's nothing you have to take with you. However, at a CE5 event, it's very common for people to see interesting phenomena, or at least want to try to photograph or video interesting phenomena. So I'm going to show you all of the things that I take with me. Um, and all of these things are optional, uh, but these are, this is just to show you the pos possible things that you could take with you. Uh, to enhance your CE5 experience. First of all, uh, I carry quite a lot of equipment, so I've got this really cool bag. It's called Endurax, and I got this on 
Amazon. This is like a really nice big bag. It's a photography uh, bag, so it's got lots of little compartments in it, lots of substantial compartments in it for carrying photography equipment and other things. So I would carry this with me and um, one thing I will take with me also to keep me warm is this safety uh, blanket. It's a survival blanket. It's uh, shiny on one side to reflect heat in case you get too cold. So I like to lay this on the ground uh, and then put my mat on top of it. This just gives me uh, a little bit extra ins insulation from heat escaping and keeping me warm. So that's one thing I take with me. Let's see what's in here. So I've got a portable speaker. Now a portable speaker is good if you want to play any sounds at CE5 events. Some people like playing sounds. I like playing a bit of music from time to time, um, but none of that is essential. If you're setting up a group and you want me to uh, lead the meditation, the remote viewing session, uh, there are several groups out there around the world that uh, take one of these and a speaker that connects to your phone and uh, I can connect to you over Zoom and I can lead the meditation for you if you have one of these speakers. So that's, that's something that uh, some groups do. Let's see what else I've got in here. Okay, many people like to use a laser pointer. There's lots of different types available on Amazon. They're, they're all about the same. Um, I actually haven't found one that I really like. Uh, I think I need one that's more powerful, got a, got a wider beam so it's easier to see. Uh, this one is pretty decent though. This I think is designed for fitting onto a, a, a rifle or a gun. This is Pinty. It's a little more expensive than some of the others, but it's, uh, it's a good reliable beam, uh, laser pointer for pointing out things in the sky. So if you see a UFO or something, you just turn this on and point this up into the sky and everybody can see where you're pointing. So some kind of laser pointer. You can get things uh, like this for about $20, $30 on Amazon. Now I usually carry just a twist on and off ordinary um, uh, flashlight or torch. And the reason I do that is because uh, I've seen that some spiritualists, some people who talk to spirits, can utilize something like this and the electromagnetic field that, um, uh, that is produced by a spirit. So what you do is you twist it, uh, you find, you twist it so it turns on, and then you just twist it off until it only just comes off. So just twist it so it just comes off like that. Then you can leave that uh, on a, a surface somewhere so that if any ET spirits or electromagnetic fields come in, you might find that something happens to turn these uh, this on. And sometimes you end up having conversations with some kind of spiritual entity uh, that can has the capability of turning this on and off using their electromagnetic fields. I learned that chip, that trick from uh, Chip Coffey. I don't know if any of you have heard of him, but he has a good TV show called Psychic Kids. So those are two things I carry with me. Also, um, let's see, I've got things in here I don't want to all drop out but I've got four infrared, and again, in, in America these are called flashlights, but in England you'd call them torches, four infrared torches, which um, you can't see visibly the light that they produce. Uh, you can just see a little red thing that, that turns on when you, uh, when you turn them on there. If I, if I switch the video to night vision, then you would probably be able to see something. Let's try that. I'll try turning the lights off in my, my place here. So the camera, the video camera that I'm using has a night scope or night vision feature, 
which is very uh, helpful and I actually use these these flashlights or infrared torches to light things up in the dark so that if any ETs appear in the dark they're lit up by something and with the night vision maybe I'll be able to detect them so I actually have four of these I got these on Amazon and these ones are pretty good I wonder what brand these are I can't see a brand here right now so that then brings me on to my camera and my video camera so in this section here I will have an ordinary camera and a video camera now the video camera I'm using right now to record this so I can't show that to you but it is a Sony 4k camera that has night shot capabilities um, and then really this is the only other thing that I have this is a Sony Alpha 7 Mark II and you can really use any camera um, use a full frame camera if you can they're more expensive but they're going to let they're going to have a larger sensor on the back they're going to let in more light so you'll be able to get better pictures better photos and and videos if you want you want a, a good lens on this this is a 70 to 300 uh, lens uh, so with that lens you can zoom in quite a lot on objects uh, it's this is the 300 takes it so that you can just about get a decent photograph of the moon uh, kind of small on the image but you could zoom in on that and see a fairly okay image of the moon if you want a, a better image of, of the moon or stuff further away you want a higher zoom factor and um, I actually have here uh, I, I bought this shoe this platform for it which is longer and extended which which is good for uh, cameras with a big lens because then you can <clears throat> balance it better on a tripod and I will actually carry two tripods with me I can't show you either of those here now one tripod is being used right here for the video camera that I'm using it's a Manfrotto tripod and uh, I would use a another Manfrotto tripod for this so two tripods make sure they're not too heavy relatively light otherwise it's going to be too heavy for you to carry but being able to take photographs and videos uh, that's those are both good capabilities to have on a ce5 adventure and the other things i have in here are just spare batteries and uh, spare memory cards and spare uh, sort of wipes for the lenses um, but that's that's basically all the equipment that i take with me now if you want to you can take something like binoculars I find that actually, you know, binoculars actually do work very well. These are uh, 10 times by 50, which I think are very good binoculars for this sort of thing. You don't want binoculars that are too powerful because then when you try and hold the image steady, uh, if they're zoomed in too much, they will be, uh, the image will be shaking so much you really can't see anything at all but 10 by 50 I, is, a, is a good sort of magnification that I recommend and the, these are good but um, all of this weight together uh, is just maybe a little bit too much for me to carry comfortably so I tend to leave these behind and focus more on things that I can actually record something uh, and then look at later you can uh, buy something like this this is a infrared monocular it's like a, a single sort of telescopic lens that sees infrared just like the infrared on this video camera here and uh, this is kind of an, an older uh, uh, model uh, this is Bushnell um, and you can buy uh, more modern ones with with HD video uh, recording capabilities and these are good for uh, see if you see something up in the sky maybe in orbit or very high up you can zoom in on these and see them very clearly so uh, yes these are good for distant distant objects 
With distant objects, I find that really all you tend to see though is a, is a bright light, a bit like a, a star or a satellite that's moving. Sometimes it will flare, um, but you don't really see any uh, significant detail this far off. So I tend not to take this with me to, to focus on the other two recording methods so that I can try and get uh, images which are a little, little closer and a little bit more interesting. I forgot to talk about the importance of having a flashlight or a torch at night time during a CE5. You've absolutely got to be able to see where you're walking, going to the location and coming back and maybe even setting up and uh, taking stuff down. In England we call them torches, in America we call them flashlights. Um, and this is one that I like. It's, uh, it goes around your, your forehead. It's a headla headlamp is what they're called. A uh, headlamp for camping. Um, all of these things are, are probably best bought in a camping store. And this particular one has different uh, brightness settings. Uh, there's a lot of different ones you can buy. This one I find quite comfortable. Uh, what is it? Princetto. Okay, so I recommend that one, uh, but uh, it's not safe to be walking around at night time where you can't see what's on the floor. So definitely some kind of a torch or a flashlight. Um, this is the one of my two tripods that I use. Oh, part of it just fell out. This is a Manfrotto uh, tripod and uh, Manfrotto is a good make. I actually ended up buying four or five small tripods, just trying to get something cheap and easy that, that my video camera could sit on top of, and all of them were kind of failures, so I ended up spending a little bit more money to get um, a Manfrotto. This particular one is, is an element, and the legs extend. You can get a large element, uh, Manfrotto or a small one. This is a small one um, but it comes up to a, a, a good height so that you can uh, put a video camera on top of that. I put my video camera on top of it and the video camera just sits up there. Um, my larger Manfrotto uh, tripod uh, which right now is in front of me. My video camera is actually on it right now. That one I use for my uh, regular full-frame camera. But it's important when taking photographs at night to, um, or, or videos, but mostly cameras, uh, it's important to have uh, the camera on a tripod, so if you take a long exposure shot, then you get a clear image, because if there's low light levels, you might want to have a, a, a low shutter speed, a low shutter speed, will keep the, the camera, the, the shutter open for longer, take in more light so you can see it better, but then things start to blur if they're moving. And if you're moving your camera around while you're doing that, then you'll get a blurred image. So tripods are important for, uh, for taking photographs in the dark. Just a couple of extra things that I sometimes take with me, depending on the environment, uh, gaiters which uh, go around the, uh, the bottom of the shoe or the boot that you're wearing and connects up a uh, ceiling around your leg, just below the knee. These are good for keeping out uh, thorns and uh, little sticky burrs or seeds. So I wear those when I go out into a lot of locations. They, they keep out insects, uh, they can prevent snakes or things if there's snakes there. So uh, gaiters I, I recommend depending on the environment uh, and of course you've got to wear appropriate uh, footwear depending on the environment and you may be lucky and you can just wear trainers or tennis shoes or something but um, typically you would need to wear something a little bit more like a hiking or a proper walking boot or shoe. Uh, where there's rocks and uneven equipment, um, uneven ground, or where it's wet. So dress appropriately, make sure you can see in the dark, and um, make sure your camera can take good photos in the dark if you want to take photos. 
Okay, I think that's probably everything. Good luck again, have fun on your CE5 adventures.